This is an arcade gaming console based on a very simple chip, the ATtiny85. But this is nothing new, these projects were online for a long time, but I wanted to make it too, so I've made a PCB. The ATtiny85 is a low-power 8-bit microcontroller that has enough flash memory for these small games. The pinout of this chip is very limited, so those who made these games had to think of different ways to make the use of more buttons. By the way, you have the links below for all the original posts with the creator of each game and a huge thank you to each one, these games are quite fun. Since the ATtiny is very cheap, you could upload a different game to multiple chips. And like that, all you have to do in order to play a different game is to swap the chip, as you would do with any retro gaming console. You could have one for Space Invaders, another one for Tetris for example, and another one for Flappy Bird and so on. The circuit of this board is very simple. In this video I will show you how to make this board, order the PCB, solder the components, prepare the bootloader of the ATtiny85 and how to upload each game using Arduino. And also, I will show you a short gameplay for each game. So make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons. So let's get started. This episode is sponsored by the PCB manufacturer GLC PCB. You can still get 5 PCBs for only $2 and the order process is fast and easy. And to save money you could go to the link below where you will find a GLC PCB contest and you can vote for my PCB project and by that you will win a coupon that you could use on any PCB order process. Once you voted for my project you will get that coupon from GLC PCB and that will appear on your order process for ordering 2 layers, 4 or even 6 layers PCBs of very good quality. The link is in the description. What's up my friends, welcome back. This here is the PCB for this project. As you can see it has 3 push buttons, it also has a buzzer, the OLED display with an ice crazy communication and the ATtiny85 chip. In the center we have the sliding switch, in order to turn this PCB on and off. And by the way on the back of the PCB, this is powered from a 3 volts button cell battery like this one. This voltage is enough for the low power ATtiny and the display. We can also see on the PCB some pull down resistors and a small LED. We don't solder the ATtiny directly on the PCB, because we want to be able to change the chips with different games. So for that I will use a socket like this one. In my case I had some 28 pin sockets that I just cut in parts of 8 pins. The push buttons that I've used are SMD, but the circuit is so simple that you would have space for through holes as well. The buzzer is a passive one so it needs a PWM signal in order to beep. But active buzzer would work as well. I also wanted to use this new type of ice crazy OLED display, which is twice as big. But unfortunately, the power pins are backwards and it also requires more current, so I'm not sure if the small battery could handle that. But anyway, this is the final circuit for this PCB, and as you can see, it's very simple. We have the battery connection, the buzzer, the OLED display with some pins, the ATtiny, 3 push buttons with pull downs, a sliding switch to turn it on and off and the LED. Port B4 and B3 from the ATtiny85 are used for the data and clock for the OLED display. The push buttons are connected to port B0, 2 and 5. And these here are 6 pins for the ISP programming. As you can see on the PCB, these are the SPA pins with connection for MOSI, MISO, clock and reset connection. We will later use the Arduino as ISP in order to burn the bootloader and upload the code to these small ATtiny chips. So guys, I passed the schematic to PCB and start placing the components. I was looking for a very small PCB, in this case the board was 70 by 40 mm with some round corners. And you can select that option in Easy EDA by creating the corner radius. Once I've decided more or less where to place the components, I route manually all the tracks using a width of 0.4mm. I also add some 3mm vias in case that I want to create a 3D case and screw this PCB inside of that with some 3mm screws. Ok, so once the PCB is ready, I run the design rule check, this is a very important step. Then I click this button here and I generate the Gerbers. From here I can order directly at GLC PCB. So this will open a new page on glcpcb.com 
and the Gerber files will be automatically uploaded. Once uploaded, let's select some settings. In my case, I select 5 PCBs in order to take advantage of the $2 offer. The thickness of my PCB will be 1.6 and I select the white solder mask color. I save to cart and make the payment and that's it. The order process from GLC PCB is very very fast and easy and for only $2 plus shipping you can have the PCBs. I'm not sure for other countries but for here in Spain the shipping will cost you only 6 more dollars so you could have 5 professional made PCBs for less than $8. In just 10 days I received the PCBs to Spain. GLC PCB did a very good job as always. The solder mask is right on spot, good quality pads and there are no visible errors with this PCB. Ok, so now that I have the boards, let's solder all the components. So gather all the parts. You will need the battery socket, 3 SMD push buttons, 1 sliding switch, 1 buzzer like this one, the OLED display with Ice Christie communication, a DIP socket for the chip and the ATtiny85. You will also need a few 1K resistors and the LED. And don't worry, you have the Gerbers, the part list and each example code together with a step-by-step -step tutorial on electronews.com, so check the description. Ok, so we start with the 8-pin socket. For that I've cut a part from a bigger socket because I don't have an 8-pin one. Next I solder the push buttons. Once I have that, I now add the sliding switch. Next I solder the buzzer with the pins facing the bottom side of the PCB so the sound will get towards us while playing. I now solder the LED here and the rest of the SMD resistors. Also remember that we have a few resistors on the back. Ok guys, so finally I flip the board and I solder the battery socket. And finally, the last part is the OLED display. Ok, so there you have it. The gaming console is ready. All is missing is the ATtiny85 with a working code. So for that I place an ATtiny chip inside of the 8-pin socket. Be careful and make sure which is the first pin and don't place it backwards. Now on the side I solder some male pins for the ISP programming connection with some wires connected to the Arduino Uno. See the schematic for this below, but the connections are very easy. We connect the reset, the MOSI, the MISO and clock pins to 10, 11, 12 and 13 from the Arduino. We also place a 10 microfarad capacitor between ground and reset. Now plug these male pins into the PCB on the SPI port. I've used wires of different colors, so I don't mess it up which is MISO, MOSI and so on. Ok, so now we are ready to program the chip. For that go and open Arduino IDE. Connect the Arduino Uno with the USB to your PC. Now you have to go to examples and open the Arduino SISP. Make sure that you select the Uno board and the CAM and upload this example to the Arduino Uno. Now connect the ISP wires from the Arduino to your PCB. For the next step, one option is to go below and download the ATtiny master boards in a zip file and then copy that to the Arduino directory. The other option is to copy and paste this JSON link into the Arduino preferences. Then you have to go to the Arduino IDE to Boards Manager. Now here you have to search for the ATtiny. Select these boards and install them. And now if you go to Boards, you should be able to select the ATtiny type of boards. So select that. Then select the ATtiny85 model. As for the clock, select the internal one of 8 MHz. Now go to Programmer and select the Arduino SISP. This will use the code on the Arduino Uno to create the ISP communication and upload the codes to the ATtiny. But first, you have to click the BIRD bootloader. This will burn the internal 8MHz bootloader to the ATtiny85. We wait for a while and then you get the message bootloader burn complete, so we are ready to upload the code. For that go below and download all the games compatible with this PCB. We have all these games here, so select any one that you want. Let's start with Frogger for example. So open this with Arduino. Make sure that you still have the ATtiny85 board selected, the internal 8MHz clock and the Arduino SISP programmer. Make sure the Arduino is still connected to the PCB for the SPI and click upload. The buzzer will start beeping and when you get the message upload complete, disconnect the SPI wires from the PCB. 
Now you can add a 3 volts battery and flip the switch. And there you go, let's play some Frogger. With the left and right buttons we can move the frog. And if you press both buttons at the same time, you will jump forward. The idea of this game is to take all the frogs across the street. If you press and hold the left button, we can toggle the sound on and off. And if you press and hold the left button together with the right button, you can reset the score. Ok guys, so next, in the same way, I now upload another game. In this case, Space Attack. Ok guys, the next game that I upload is called UFO and Stacker. This is a 2-in-1 game, so when you start the console you will get the Stacker game. But then when the console starts, if you hold the right button and press the left one, the game will start with the UFO game, which is basically a Flappy Bird game. All you have to do is to jump and avoid obstacles. We also have a Tetris game. The only problem is that the screen is flipped 90 degrees. So if you have no problem playing like this, well, it could be quite fun. Next we have the Pong game, or in this case it's called Bad Bonanza. Another game that we have is just a simple roller coaster, so let's see it. Ok guys, so finally we have a Morse converter, which is not actually a game but it would be quite fun. All you have to do is to type the lines and the dots and it will print the Morse character. This could be a neat way for you to learn Morse. So guys, these were all the games compatible with my PCB. Below this video you will find some links to other 80 tiny games but with a different schematic with more buttons or a potentiometer. I also recommend you this website, with some very nice games and a different schematic as well. So now you can make your own PCB and try different games. A 3D printed case for this PCB should also be nice. A better plan is to make a separated PCB for the 80 tiny chip, so each game will have some male pins, so it will be easier to swap, just as an old gaming console. I hope that you liked this video and learned something new. Feel free to leave a comment, and if this video taught you something new, give it a like. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.